today's lesson is a step-by-step -step painting demonstration to paint a landscape and more specifically to paint a winter landscape because it's that time of year I thought it'd be more fun to make a snowy scene. Anytime we paint a landscape, the first thing we're going to do is paint the sky because it's the background. It's the thing furthest away. Please remember when you're getting ready to paint that you've got your paint palette set up, your cup of water, and a paper towel because we need to keep our brush dry between colors. Now one thing you're going to notice in the sky is that it goes, when you look up, it is a darker blue. And as you look down near the horizon line, it's a lighter blue. So we're going to start today with a big old stripe of pure blue right on your paper. We're going to blend our sky right on the paper. <clears throat> Blended value scale. Now I'm grabbing white paint and I'm putting it right on the paper and I'm mixing it right there. If your sky is a little streaky, it's okay. Skies tend to be streaky, especially in the winter time. We've got clouds floating by, wisps of moisture in the air. So you can see that I'm blending my color. I'm going to keep going. Keep adding white to this so that it feels darker near the top and a little bit lighter as we come down to the horizon. We're going to paint about halfway down the page. Sometimes I tell students, try a little dab of yellow. This sky is very purpley blue. You can leave it like this. It'll look like a good stormy kind of night sky. But if you add a touch of yellow, you're going to have a little bit more of a realistic blue, a little more of the sky blue that we actually see. It has a little bit of a turquoise color to it. So you can try adding some yellow to that to change it up. Once you're about halfway down the page, set it aside and let it dry for a minute or two. Next up, let's put some trees to fill this middle ground. Now, we know we have to make our color green. So get that paintbrush cleaned off and dry and make yourself a nice dark green to start with. I know when I make green that yellow is my wimpy color. So I'm going to set some yellow aside and I'll add some blue to it. We want a nice dark green, a forest green. What's another way? I can keep adding blue, but eventually I'm going to have a really blue green. We don't necessarily want that. Another option, take a little bit of black. That will darken any color. Don't get carried away. We don't want a black tree, but you can darken a color with some black. What else can we do to red? Excuse me. What else can we do to green? We can take a little dab of red and turn that into a muddier color as well. That will also darken the color. Once you're satisfied, you have a nice dark green. We're going to use the tip of our brush and we're going to dab at the paper. We're making sort of a triangle shape here, or at least I am. You could try different tree shapes. If you'd rather have oak trees, go for it. But in my winter scene, I feel like having pine trees, fir trees, whatever you want to call them. I'm running out of green, so I'm going to add more blue. Don't make perfect triangles. Have some branches that stick out. If you're running out of green, make more. As I start another tree, I'm going to make sure it's a different height. Do not make every tree the exact same height. And near the bottom, where I don't have sky anymore, my trees are touching. Another trick to doing the tree is give yourself a big line. That'll be the center line of my tree. And then I'm going to work down that line with a little tail to the side, a little tail to the other side. And I just keep dabbing like that as I go down. Make sure you have variety. We never have a pattern in nature. Next up, let's take a little black. Let's put a little black down in here, just at the bottom of the trees. Take some pure black and dab that in there. We want the bottom of trees to look shadowy. 
the shadowy forest ahead of us. We can't really see down there. So just go ahead and color in a little black. When you're done with that, clean off your brush. It's time to make a new color. Give that sh those trees a minute or two to dry. And then you're gonna make a lighter green. So you're gonna take more yellow. We can start by trying to add more yellow to our green puddle, or you may just have to set some yellow to the side to make a brighter green. We want a brighter green where the sunlight hits our tree branches. We can't just use the same green. The whole thing looks a little flat. You can try adding a touch of white, lighten that color up too. So once you have a lighter green, a yellowy green that you're happy with, we're just gonna add a little bit of texture. Don't overdo it. So just where I think the tops of the branches might be seeing some sunshine, I'm gonna do a little bit of this yellowy green that I've created. I may not even do it on all of the trees. I want the trees closer to me to be the ones that feel like they're getting more sunlight. Those ones a little farther away, you pick, doesn't matter. Those ones we might leave darker because it's like they're back in the woods more. So now we've added a little dimension to our trees by doing a second layer of lighter green. Just be careful not to overdo it. And we don't wanna work all the way down into that black area. We're supposed to leave that to be black and shadowy. At this point, I have to be honest, I feel like I need to add another tree in there. I'm gonna squeeze another little tree over here. Maybe it'll look further away because I'm going to make it feel a little smaller, a little daintier. I feel like putting one right here, too. I'm going to leave them darker so they feel farther away. I just squeezed it in. Up to you guys how many trees you want in there. It's your scene. And when you're happy with your trees for now, we're gonna go ahead and leave them. Now, I told you we're making a snowy scene for winter, so we're gonna go ahead and paint the ground like it's got snow on it. What color is snow? Of course, it's white. I'm gonna take white paint right onto my paper. Does that look like snow? Not really. If you really go out, next time you're in the snow, I'm painting right up to my shadowy bottom of the forest, by the way. Next time you're out in the snow, I want you to pay attention. Snow actually absorbs and reflects the light around it. Most often, this is a bluish color. Grab just a touch of blue on your paintbrush. I want you to add some streaks into your snowy scene. Now that's a little much, right? We don't want that. Grab more white, paint right over that. Let's smear that out. If you're worried about this, you could start by mixing a light blue on your palette before you paper. I need to shift so I can protect my table a little better. So I am adding lots of white to this paper. And that little bit of blue has mixed in everywhere. Now I'm gonna leave this corner here because you know what I want there? I'm gonna give us a little pond. We've got a snowy meadow in the woods with a little pond. Now I'm going with really heavy white paint here because I don't want it to be too blue. I don't want it to look like water. And I'll even curve it a little bit so it sort of looks like mounds of snow. You know what I'm talking about? Little snow drifts. As I add in that extra white, heavy white. Now in this corner, I still gonna have a pond. So again, with my blue paint, I'm gonna paint like an oval. Remember, this cannot be a circle. Anything that's a circle is looking straight at you. We need to squish it down flat like we would the top of a cylinder. So I didn't even clean off my brush. I just started grabbing some blue and white. Oops. And I'm streaking it in. Notice I'm not going around shape here. I'm just leaving it. A pond has muddy edges. We're going to fill some stuff in there. I'm going to let this be streaky. And once again, I'm going to grab a touch of yellow. I want to murky up this pond. I don't want it to be too pretty. Water is never quite that clear. So a little yellow streaked in there. Now if it starts to turn to green on you, what do you need to do? I could add just a little touch of red, though I'm getting carried away here. It'll start to turn my water a little more muddy. 
So that's always an option. While I'm down here working on this pond, let's add some stones. Now, how do we make a stone? This is going to surprise you. I'm going to take a dab of white, wherever you feel like you could use a stone on the edge of your pond, maybe over here. I'm going to paint myself, kind of give it a flat bottom, it looks better, and a round top, just a blob. And now I'm going to grab a pin prick of black paint and I'm going to shade it. I'm going to add a little bit right there and guess what? It mixed into gray, like the color of a stone. So I'm going to shade that in and I want to try to leave one side darker than the other. That's not dark enough, so I'm going to add a little bit more black and see if I can get that to shade into something that looks like a stone. I'll keep blending it back and forth till I'm happy. And there we go. I've even seen students do this with their pinky finger. They go like this and they try to blend it. You can even try that if you're not happy with your brush. Let's do a few of those. Let's go ahead and give it another one right here. Oh, and I'm going to have them overlapping. So I have one that looks a little closer. You could change the shape. You could make it a little pointier or more crooked. Have fun experiment. And I'm going to shade it in again. So that dab of black, dark side should be the same side and try to blend it so it looks kind of round. Put in a few more, maybe one over here. You can make them a little smaller as they get up higher because they're further away from you now in the scene. Add as many stones as you feel like adding around your muddy pond. Time to clean off your brush. Now this snowy scene is still missing something. We need a snowman, of course. Clean off your brush. And just like the snow, and just like everything else we've done, we're gonna start with some white. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna put my snowman over here. He's gonna overlap my trees, so let's hope your trees are dry. Start with a white circle. Now that is a sphere. This is the bottom of my snowman. To make it look more like a sphere, I'm gonna grab a pinprick of blue this time instead of black, and I'm gonna shade my sphere. The left side of my snowman will be a little bit darker. It'll be more blue than the right side. Let's do it again. Clean off your brush a little bit so you don't overdo the blue. So I just used my paper towel and wiped it off. Do it again. I'm gonna make a little bit smaller sphere sitting on top of the first one. Pin prick of blue, blend it right in there on that snowman. Now I'm picking up colors from the background because I did not let my paint dry enough. You'll also find with temper paint, it never really stops mixing. So don't overdo it. The more I move this brush around, the more I'm gonna keep picking up those greens and blacks from the background. So just watch out for that. You don't wanna overdo it. Sometimes you just gotta let things be. I'm gonna try one more, see if I can get one more without it turning green on me from those trees to give this little snowman a head. My spheres are overlapping a little bit. And one more time, I'm gonna add that pinprick of blue to give that guy a little form shadow on the left side. And try not to overdo it. Again, you can even take your finger. Sometimes the brush is more frustrating. You can just go with your finger. Now that is a good looking snowman, but he is pretty naked. So let's fancy him up. First of all, he needs a top hat. I'm going with pure black here and I'm just painting a rectangle or a square, depends on the size of your snowman, on the top of his head and give it a little brim. Next up, my snowman needs eyes, nose, and buttons. Here's a little trick that you can do with a paintbrush when you're trying to do perfect circles and you've got a brush this big, I'm gonna flip it around and use the butt end of my brush. Dab it in the black paint, careful, and just touch, touch. There's his eyes. I'm gonna try, I mean, you can practice over here on your palette. I wanna go a little bit lighter so I don't get such fat dots to make him a little smiley face. So I'm trying to barely touch, oops. And if they're not perfect, that's okay. 
There's his smile. And I'll give him some big fat buttons down his chest. Ta-da! He still doesn't look quite right. What else is he missing? He needs branches. He needs some arms. I'm going to use the tip of my brush in black paint. Now practice on your palette. You're trying to make a perfect line just by dabbing. So I'm going to dab and then make some branches. So make it fork out. These arms would show up a little better if they didn't have black background behind them. So if you can put it lower in your paper, that's great. Maybe I'll make this one crooked. So that it's on that white background instead of all up there in the green. So it shows up a little bit more this time. Now we are still missing one thing. and I'm very particular about this. He needs a carrot nose. Clean off that brush and make yourself some orange. We make orange with yellow and red. Do you see how we're using all our painting skills? Everything we've learned. Yellow and red make orange. So we're going to go ahead and mix up an orange here on the side. I'm making a tiny puddle is the only orange I'm going to use in this picture. And we're going to paint. I used to tell kids to do a triangle and they would have these big ugly triangles. So don't do a triangle. Just do a long skinny line. And you have to kind of dab it in there. The corner of my brush for that carrot nose. Now, we need a few more things. Every good snowman has a cast shadow. That is correct. Here's how I'm going to do some cast shadows in this scene. I'm going to go ahead and take a color that's already on my palette. Something muddy. So maybe this that's left over. And I'm going to just use a wet brush. Pick up that color and smear it around a little bit. I'm going to make a watercolor. I don't want it to be too dark. Test it over here somewhere on your paper, on your palette. With that wet color, I'm going to give cast shadows to everything I can think of in this picture. First of all, my snowman. He needs a little watery cast shadow. So wiggle your brush. If it's too wet, dry it off. And just give him a little shadow coming off to the side here. Remember, his form shadow is on this side. Therefore, we know the light must be coming this direction in our picture. So my shadow is going that way. You can also give shadows to other things in your picture. Maybe your rocks. Those rock shadows need to be darker. They shouldn't be lighter than the actual rock. And in fact, this almost looks like a reflection in the water now, doesn't it? So give it a little shadow right underneath your rocks. I'm just grabbing some black paint too and making sure my brush is a little wet so it doesn't become a really strong mark. So just try that. Same thing. I grabbed a little black. My brush is a little wet. Give that a little shadow. And again, it's going away from the light. Shadows done. I'm going to clean off my brush again. I'm going to need a brown. We need to add some dead grass that's sort of poking up here in this scene. Let's make ourselves a brown color. Now, how do you make brown? You can mix complementary colors together. You can mix all the pretty colors you have on the paper together. I can take some white and mix it on this tree color I had from earlier. That's a little green. Maybe I'll add a touch of red to that. Mess around with colors till you have something that looks just plain dirty and muddy. Ooh, that's better. I added yellow to that and now it looks a little more brown. Now, here's the trick. I don't want a globby brush. Take your paint and just clean it off on your towel right away. You should have a, basically a cleaned off brush. I'm just going to get a little bit of my paint on the tip of my brush and I'm going to flick. Practice. Flick. Flick. Flick your wrist. We're going to add some grass, some dead grass that's sort of poking up. Let's start down here on the rocks. Just flick. It should be a little bit dry. This is called dry brushing. It gives sort of a grass technique. So I'm putting some grass poking out in front of my rocks like it's growing out of the pond. I think the snowman could use a couple blades of grass somewhere. And let's pick a few spots over just in the middle of our meadow, no matter. For some dead grass. Now, as the farther away you get, the smaller your grass should get. So up higher on the page, smaller. Down lower, we can have bigger grass. And remember, just a few around the rocks kind of help them look like they belong there. This is turning muddy on me because my paint is still wet, so I'm going to freshen up that color that I was working with. 
I want it to be more yellow than the rock is. Try some yellow, why not? I'll liven this picture up a little bit. And I'm gonna add some really tiny areas of grass back here. Nothing major. But this kind of detail gives dimension to paintings. So. And the last details we're gonna add, if you still have white on your palette, great. If not, you need to get a little bit of white. I'm gonna add a couple of things here. I'm gonna add some white streaks and make sure your brush is clean. If it's a muddy mess, you're gonna have muddy streaks. I'm gonna add some little short streaks. Don't get carried away to my water, like ripples in the water. I'm just, I have barely any paint on my brush. Do you see how little paint is on there? You need to keep a clean brush for these kinds of projects. Okay, a few ripples. I could have added more grass on that edge right there. I wish I had, but I don't want to go back now. And lastly, this is a snowy scene. Let's give our trees some snow. We know when snow falls, it's coming down. So let's only put some snow. Whoa, that was way too much paint on my brush. You see that globiness? That doesn't look very pretty. I'm gonna dab that off. Try that again. We're just gonna touch only on the upper half of your tree. Can you add some snow? So I'm using the tip of my brush. I'm going straight down with my brush as I dab some snow onto my branches. Snow settles on the top of branches, so aim for the top of each branch. And I'd say as we get down here, we wanna have a little bit less and a little bit less. So the most at the top of each tree. You don't even have to do each tree. If you wanna leave some of them without snow because they look farther away, you can do that. If you're having troubles with this, I want you to notice something. I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna touch it like it's angled to the left. And I'm gonna change the angle as I go across the tree. So I made a fan shape. That way it looks sort of like you're touching each branch even as they turn towards you in the picture. And on some of them, you can just use the corner of your brush instead of the whole side of the brush. What do you guys think about that dark one right there? Can't decide. I think I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit. And the last thing we're gonna do for our snowy scene is make some snowflakes. Let's go back to that technique. We learned to use the tip, the handle of our brush, dab it in your pure white paint, and start at the top, because you can't screw up the top. If they're big fat snowflakes at the top, that looks okay. We're gonna add little teeny dots wherever you think. And there's usually kind of more when you look up in the sky. So we're going to really fill it up up here. And as we come down in our scene, we'll just have less and less. Vary the size. We don't want polka dots. So try to press hard, get some fat ones, have some little tiny skinny ones where you barely touched, or maybe the paint was running out on your brush. Work right to the edge, even off the page. And sometimes it kind of looks good if they come down and they just sort of fade away and disappear. We don't see them anymore. And I think that's about it for our snowy scene. Go ahead and autograph your work. Give me your initials or you can use a Sharpie.